I will tell you more about the whale. During the Age of Heroes, the Vale was thinly populated and was ruled by a score of petty first man kings. The Vale is where the Andals first landed and spread out from during their invasion of Westeros 6000 years ago. Rather than unite against the newcomers, many of the first man rulers sought alliances with the Andals, often with disastrous results. However, Andals began fighting amongst themselves, and the remaining first men, seeing that, began to unify behind Robar II Royce, crowning him High King of the Vale, the Fingers, and the Mountains of the Moon. House Arryn claimed the Vale after defeating Robar II Royce in the Battle of the Seven Stars. The Battle of the Seven Stars resulted in the extinguishing of 14 first man houses and the submission to the Andals of other houses, such as the Belmores, Hunters, Coldwaters, Redfords, and Royces. Those first men who did not accept Andal rule fled into the Mountains of the Moon, becoming the Mountain Clans. Arryns are one of the oldest lines of Andal nobility in the Seven Kingdoms. They ruled as kings of Mountain and Vale for approximately 6,000 years. During the Aegon's conquest, the Arryns bent the knee to Aegon the Conqueror, bringing the Vale under the control of the Iron Throne. After the Aegon's conquest, Warden of the East is the title given to the person responsible for the defense of the eastern coasts of the Seven Kingdoms. Traditionally, the title is conferred upon House Arryn, Lords of the Eyrie, and defenders of the Vale. Robert's Rebellion began in the Vale, when Lord John Arryn, defender of the Vale, refused to surrender his wards. Lords Robert Baratheon and Eddard Stark to King Aerys II Targaryen. Defeating his royalist bannermen at Galtown, Lord Arryn went on to help Robert secure the Iron Throne and was named his hand after the war. The people of the Vale, called the Valemen, are known as honorable, reliable warriors, steeped in honor and the worship of the Faith of the Seven. Unlike the Westerlands, which have gently rolling mountains, the mountains of the Vale are much less hospitable and more difficult to traverse. Further, while the mountains of the Westerlands are filled with precious metals, such as gold, the mountains of the Vale are not rich in resources. The valleys scattered between the harsh mountains, however, are as fertile as any in the Riverlands. As settlement patterns became established, the Reach became the main population center and cultural heartland of the Andals. Still, combined with its isolated mountainous terrain, noble families from the Vale are said to have among the purest Andal bloodlines within Westeros. A few noble families from other regions can match them for this, but no other region taken as a whole. House Vexley of Fickenden Vickenden is famous for making scented beeswax candles. House Vaxley is sworn to House Arryn of the Eyrie. The wards of House Vaxley are Light in Darkness. House Redfort of Redfort. It is one of the principal noble houses in the Vale of Arryn. The Redfords trace their descent to the first men that inhabited the Vale before the coming of the Andals. The wards of House Redfort are as strong as stone. House Royce of Runestone. It is an old and powerful noble house of the Vale, sworn to House Arryn. Their seat is the ancestral castle Runestone, located on the coast of the narrow sea north of Galtown. There is a cadet branch occupying the non-hereditary seat of the Gates of the Moon, located on the path that leads to the Eyrie. The house traces their blood to the days of the early first men, who once populated the Vale, although no doubt they have since been heavily intermarried with the Andals, who conquered the Vale millennia ago. These ancient kings, also known as the Bronze Kings of Runestone, waged many wars against fellow first man kings, such as House Shet, 
who were titled King of the True Men, the last of the Bronze Kings, King Roba II, who inherited Runestone a fortnight before his 16th name day. He proved to be such a warrior of ferocity and cunning and charm that he almost stamped the Andal Tide. He succeeded in uniting the remaining First Man Lords under a single banner to oppose the Andals, who by that time controlled three quarters of the Vale. These Lords have been petty kings, but set aside their crowns and bent the knee before Robar Royce, proclaiming him High King of the Vale, the Fingers and the Mountains of the Moon. During the Battle of the Seven Stars, the first man host, led by King Roba, was eventually defeated and Roba himself killed. The end result was that House Royce survived by yielding up gold, land and hostages. The Royces bent their knee and swore fealty to Arthas of House Arryn, the first of his name, King of Mountain and Vale. In the early days of Targaryen rule, Lord Royce of Runestone gathered forces to sweep away the rebels. In time, House Royce regained much of their pride, wealth and power. The Lady of Runestone, several years later, was Rhea Royce, who was married to Prince Daemon Targaryen, a big player in Dance of the Dragons. During the storming of the Dragon Pit, Sir Willem Royce was killed and the Royce's Valyrian steel sword, Lamentation, was lost. A lady of House Royce, Perra Royce, was married to Lord Walder Frey. Lord Tywin Lannister offered Tyrion Lannister for marriage to one of Lord Jan Royce's daughters, but was rejected. Kyle Royce was a member of Brandon Stark's party when he went to King's Landing to demand Prince Rhaegar Targaryen's head for kidnapping his sister, Lyanna Stark. When Lord Yarn went north with his son, Sir Weimar, who was joining the Night's Watch at the Wall, they stopped at Winterfell. There they hunted and in the training yard, Yarn fought and defeated both Lord Eddard Stark and Sir Roderick Cassell. House Royce of Runestone have several sets of ancient bronze plate armor inscribed with runes that are thought to make their wearers immune to injury. The truth of this claim has been called into question as quite a few Royces have died wearing them. The words of House Royce of Runestone are, we remember. The vassals of House Royce of Runestone are Coldwaters, Tullets and Shats of Gulltown. House Coldwater of Coldwater Burn. Not much is known about this house, except the fact that it is located near the mouth of a river west of the Fingers, and that the castle of Snakewood, seat of House Linderley, is nearby beyond the mountain range to the south. House Tullet of Grey Glen. Addison Tullet, known as Dolores Ad, is a member of House Tullet and is Jon Snow's friend on the wall. The words of House Tullet are, when all is darkest. House Shat of Gull Tower. Shats were once titled King of the True Men and were rivals of Royces in the times of the First Men. They even united with Andalus before the Andal invasion to beat the Royces. House Grafton of Gull Town. The Graftons are an Andal house established in Westeros prior to Andal invasion. Thus it came to be that King Osgood III Shat, King of the True Men, who was a first man ruler of Galtown and the head of House Shat during the early stages of the Andal invasion, had been waging an intermittent war against the Bronze Kings of House Royce of Runestone at that time. Under Osgood's rule, the Shats were pushed back inside their town walls. Osgood turned to Andalus for help in recovering the lands lost to King Jorvik VI Royce. Seeking to avoid the mistakes made by other First Man rulers who had hired Andal warlords with gold, he sought to bind them with blood. He gave his daughter in marriage to the Andal knight Sir Geralt Grafton took Grafton's eldest daughter as his own bride 
and married a younger daughter of Grafton to his own son and heir. All these marriages were performed by Saptons, according to the rites of the seven from across the sea. Shat even converted to the faith and swore to build a great Sapt in Galtown, should the seven grant him victory. And so he sallied forth with his allies to face the bronze king. King Osgood won his victory, but did not survive the battle. It was rumored that Sir Geralt himself struck him down, for upon his return the Andal Knight claimed his good father's crown for his own, dispossessing Osgood's lawful heir and confining him to his bedchamber until he had gotten his wife, Sir Geralt's daughter, with child. After the daughter was impregnated, Osgood's heir disappeared from the pages of history. The sister of King Robar II Royce later convinced the Shats to rebel against the Graftons, allowing Robar's men to storm the city. Like most of the Vale, however, Galtown submitted to Artis I Arryn, King of Mountain and Vale, after the Battle of Seven Stars. Together, the Arryns and Graftons developed Galtown into one of the greatest cities of Festeros. During Robert's rebellion, Mark Grafton gathered the royalist man of the Vale to prevent Robert Baratheon from sailing to Storm's End. Eventually, the rebels, led by Lord John Arryn, overcame the royalists, and Mark was slain by Robert beneath the city walls in the taking of Galtown. Lynn Corbray fought beside Mark at Galtown, and later, fought under John Arryn at the Battle of the Trident. Galtown is the major port city of the Vale of Arryn. It is located in a fine natural harbor. It is the largest city in the Vale, but it is much smaller than Old Town and King's Landing. It is ruled by House Grafton and also contains a catted branch of the Vale's rulers, House Arryn of Galtown. Galtown is an important port and portal to the Vale, its sheltered harbor offering anchorage to ships traveling from King's Landing to Bravos or the North. Its strategic location means it never lacks for trade in many of the exotic goods making their way from across the narrow sea, keeping the Vale supplied even when the passes of the Mountains of the Moon are closed in winter. Galtown has fine seamstresses as well. House Upcliffe of Witch Isle Ursula Upcliffe, a member of House Upcliffe and reputed sorceress, joined the alliance of first man houses, petty kings and clans summoned by Robar II Royce to fight against the Andals. According to tradition, Robar II won her alliance due to his honeyed tongue. Ursula participated in the Battle of Seven Stars, riding a blood-red horse. She faced Torgold Tullet and tried to curse him. However, according to Singers, Torgold leaped upon Ursula's horse, grasped her face and tore her head from her shoulders as she screamed for succor. Queen Arvan of House Upcliffe was married to King Alistair II of House Arryn. Her marriage to the Arryn King brought the Witch Isle into the realm. House Malcolm of Old Anchor. It is one of the principal houses sworn to House Arryn. House Templeton of Nine Stars. The head of the house is given the title of Knight of Nine Stars. Although Templetons are a knightly house, they are very powerful and their strength and influence are comparable to many lords. It is said they can easily raise a thousand men. The current generation House Templeton may be related to the stocks of Winterfell through the female line. Sir Lucian Templeton fought in the Battle of Seven Stars beneath the banner of Sir Artis Arryn. He is one of the candidates for the man who slew King Robar II Royce. House Vainwood of Iron Oaks. Wainwoods are known for their insistence on ceremony and are powerful vassals of House Arryn. House Hunter of Longbow Hall. 
the Hunters are of first man origin. During the Andal invasion, they allied with Robar's second Royce against the Andals. Robar outshot Lord Hunter in an archery contest to gain the Hunters as allies, although some claim Robar cheated. Robar's forces were defeated in the Battle of the Seven Stars, however, and the Hunters submitted to Arthas I Aaron, the new King of Mountain and Vale. House Corbray of Hart's home. It is an old but poor house. The ancestral Valyrian steel sword of the Corbrays is called Lady Forlorn. The Corbrays were an Andal house during the Andal invasion. Corvin Corbray conquered the Fingers by defeating Houses Brightstone and Shell, claiming for himself the title of Lord of the Five Fingers. When the first man began to unite against the Andals, King Roba, Second Royce, slew Kyle Corbray, King of the Fingers. The Corbrays claim that Sir Jamie Corbray killed Robar in the Battle of the Seven Stars. Petia Baelish's great-grandfather was born in Braavos and came to the Vale as a sellsword hired by Lord Corbray. During the first Blackfire Rebellion, Sir Gwain Corbray of the King's God was part of the Loyalist forces that fought Damon Blackfire at the Battle of the Redgrass Field. They dueled for nearly an hour, their Valyrian swords Blackfire and Lady Forlorn clashing loudly. At last, Blackfire struck Gwain's helm and left him blind and bleeding. Damon dismounted to tend to his foe and ordered his supporter to carry Gwain back to the Maesters for healing an action that afterwards some considered decisive, since it gave the enemy longbowmen enough time to find a good position to fire the arrows that killed Damon. During Robert's rebellion, Lynn Corbray fought Lord John Arryn at the gates of Galtown, and later joined him at the Battle of the Trident, where he slew Prince Lewin Martell. At the battle, he took Lady Forlorn after his father was injured and led a charge which broke the Dornishman. His father gave Lady Forlorn to him upon his death, something his older brother Lionel resented. House Belmore of Strong Song, one of the more powerful noble houses sworn to House Arryn. House Lindley of the Snakewood. The Snakewood is a forest in the north of the Vale of Arryn. House Lindley have the title Lord of the Snakewood and rule over their castle, which is also called Snakewood. House Elisham of the Paps. House Elisham were once independent rulers of the Paps until they bent the knee to Hugo Arryn the Hopeful, King of Mountain and Vale. The Paps is named after a pair of large stony hills that rise together on the island. House Prior of Pebble Pebble was brought under the rule of House Arryn by King Hugh Arryn the Fat, father of Hugo the Hopeful. House Baelish of the Fingers The seat of House Baelish is an unnamed old flint tower, which commands no more than a few stony acres on the smallest of the fingers. House Baelish's small folk consists of a village of a dozen families. The current lord, Petia Baelish, is only the second generation of the landed family. His grandfather had been a landless hedge knight, his father the smallest of lords. The house began with Petia's great-grandfather, who was born in Braavos and came to the Vale as a sellsword employed by House Corbray. His son took the head of the titan as his sigil when he was knighted. Petia Baelish was given a minor sinecure in customs by Lord John Arryn. The Petir distinguished himself, bringing in three times as much as any other collector. Petir's rise to King's Landing was a swift one, and within three years after his arrival at court, he sat on the small council of King Robert I Baratheon. The Three Sisters are a group of three islands, Sweet Sister, Long Sister and Little Sister, found in the Bight, located south of White Harbor and north of the Mountains of the Moon. The islands owe loose allegiance to House Arryn of the Vale. People from the Three Sisters are known as Sister Men. 
Ships go between the Three Sisters and White Harbor all the time. The sisters sell crab, fish and goat cheese to White Harbor. Sisters Stew is a white seafood stew that is served all over the Three Sisters in every inn and tavern. Beacons burn along the shores of the Three Sisters to warn passing ships of danger. The Night's Lamp of Sisterton is a prominent beacon operated by House Borrell. Some disreputable sistermen use false lights to lure ships into wrecks to take their cargo. Prior to the arrival of the Andals and the Faith of the Seven, the sistermen worshipped the Lady of the Waves and the Lord of the Skies instead of the old gods adopted by the first men of the mainland. They were a free people ruled by local kings who also acted as pirate kings. The sistermen of that time would cast dwarfs into the sea as an offering to the gods, but Septons stopped the practice after the Andal invasion. 2000 years ago, the islands were conquered by the North in an invasion known as the Rape of the Three Sisters. In response, the sistermen bent the knee to the Eyrie to expel the Northmen, ending the era of native kings on the sisters. The Aran kings of Mountain and Vale and Stark kings in the North fought over the Three Sisters for a thousand years in the war across the water, depleting much of the island's resources. The largest port of the Three Sisters, Sisterton, remembers the Northern invasion and some sistermen still resent Northmen. Reaving pirate lords from the Three Sisters once captured the Wolves' Den and made it their toehold in the North. At some point, King Theon Stark conquered the Three Islands. Once a nest for pirates, the Three Sisters have been a haven for smugglers for centuries. During the Targaryen conquest of Westeros, the sistermen rebelled against Ronald Arryn, king of Mountain and Vale, declaring Marla Sunderland as their queen. She was deposed, however, when a Bravosi fleet, hired by House Stark at the behest of Aegon the Conqueror, approached the islands. Marla's brother bent the knee while she ended her days as a silent sister. Led by the Sunderlands, the Three Sisters supported Rhaenyra Targaryen against Aegon II Targaryen during the Dance of the Dragons, along with the Arryns. The islands suffered after the Sunderlands dragged the sisters into the two of the unsuccessful Blackfire rebellions against the Targaryens. House Sunderland of the Three Sisters Sunderlands rule over the Three Sisters and reside in Sisterton, a town located on Sweet Sister and is considered the most notorious smuggler's den in all of Westeros. Sunderland's vassals, House Borrell, rule over the Sweet Sister, residing along their liege lords. Sisterton is a small, mean town, rank with the odors of pig waste and rotting fish. Its streets are made of mud and planks. By the gallows gate, there are always hanged men with their entrails dangling out. The night lamp, a lighthouse tower, and the house Borrell's castle, Breakwater, are located at Sisterton. During the Dance of the Dragons, Prince Jacaris Valerian gained House Borrell and Sunderland for the blacks during his visit to Sisterton. House Longtorp of Long Sister. They are the vassals of Sunderlands and rule over Long Sister Island. House Torrent of Little Sister. They are the vassals of Sunderlands and rule over Little Sister Island. House Borrell of Sweet Sister. Being vassals of House Sunderland, House Borrell's titles include Lord of Sweet Sister. Shield of Sisterton, Master of Breakwater Castle, and Keeper of the Night Lamp. The ancestors of House Borrell were pirate kings until the Starks came down on them with fire and sword. For 5,000 years the Borrells have had the mark, a sort of webbing between the three middle fingers on their hands. Lord Eddard Stark was taken to the Three Sisters by small folk near the start of Robert's rebellion, against the advice of Breakwater's maester, 
Lord Burrell allowed Nat's dog to leave Sisterton and continue on to the north. While serving as the master of ships for King Robert I Baratheon, Lord Stannis Baratheon once sailed to Sisterton with the fleet and made Lord Godric Burrell hang twelve of his friends, probably for smuggling. Stannis threatened to do the same to Godric if any ships were to crash if the Night Lamp Lighthouse ever went dark. Breakwater is built partially on huge stone arches that stand as bulwarks against the bite. Entry to Breakwater is by a bridge of black basalt and a rusty iron portcullis. Its defenses include a deep salt mart and a drawbridge supported by two massive chains, followed by a larger gatehouse of algae-covered stones. Steps lead to Breakwater's cavernous stone keep. Its entrance is covered by threadbare, mirish carpet. Breakwater's hall is gloomy and has a leaky roof. Only four of its twenty wall-mounted sconces hold torches. The sigil of House Borel is embroidered on a banner above the hall's half. Beneath the castle are the dungeons. The Bloody Gate is a series of battlements placed across the mountain road that leads into the Vale of Farin from the Mountains of the Moon. There are two long parapets built into the stone of the mountains. The pass, narrow where it meets the gate, is watched over by twin watchtowers, which are joined by a covered bridge that arches above the road. The gate has its own commander who is given the title, the Knight of the Gate. This commander traditionally asks the question, who would pass the bloody gate? To all who would pass through. Originally a rough horn on mortared wall, Built in the fashion of the ring forts of the first man, the bloody gate was constructed anew during the rule of Osric V Arryn, king of mountain and vale. Halek Hor, king of the isles and the rivers, failed to conquer the bloody gate three times. After Robert's rebellion, which led to House Targaryen's downfall, Lord John Arryn named Sir Brendan Tully Blackfish the Knight of the Gate. The Gates of the Moon is a castle at the base of the Giant's Lands, largest mountain in the Vale of Farron. It is held by Nestor Royce, High Steward of the Vale and Keeper of the Gates of the Moon. The Gates of the Moon is a stout castle with a mart, a gatehouse, a yard and square towers. It is larger than the Eyrie. Beyond its postern gate is a dense forest of pine and spruce, as well as the steep steps along the giant's lands. Named towers include the East Tower and the Falcon Tower. The Gates of the Moon was the first seat of House Arryn in the Vale. After the Battle of the Seven Stars, Artis Arryn, the first of his name, the first king of Mountain and Vale, began construction of the large castle where his host has encamped below the giant's lands the night before his victory. While formidable, the Gates of the Moon was considered by some not to be suitable for kings, and the fourth Aaron monarch, Roland I, found it lacking in comparison to Grand Casterly Rock and the High Tower. Roland considered dismantling his seat and starting anew, but he instead decided to build the Eyrie, high on the giant's lands after wild clansmen descended the mountains of the moon. The Gates of the Moon has since been used by House Arryn during winter, but when summer comes, they return to the Eyrie. The keepers of the Gates of the Moon have since held the castle for the Arryn kings and, after Aegon's conquest, for the Arryn, Wardens of the East, House Arryn of the Eyrie. The Arryns are considered to come from the oldest and purest line of Andal nobility, which they say reaches back to Andalus and possibly Hugor of the Hill. When King Robar's II Royce began to unite the first men and defeat some of the petty Andal kings during the Andal invasion, the Andals of the Vale united behind Sir Artis Arryn, the Falcon Knight, a native Vale man, esteemed amongst his peers and the finest warrior.
Robar was slain in the Battle of the Seven Stars, possibly by Artis, and the first man houses who remained bent the knee and swore fealty to Artis Aaron, the first of his name, new crowned king of mountain and vale. From that day, the vale became known as the Vale of Aaron. Songs of the Vale conflate Artis with the legendary Winged Knight, who is said to have slain the Griffin King atop the giant's lands. The Aaron Kings battled with the Stark Kings of Winter over the Three Sisters in the war across the water, which featured King Osgood and his son and successor, Oswin the Talon, who burned the Wolf's Den. There were bloody battles, wherein the Aaron fleet turned back slavers from Volantis, Ironborn Reavers, and pirates from the Stepstones and the Basilisk Isles. The legendary Lady Elisa Aaron gave her name to Elisa's Tears, a waterfall on the giant's lands, when she did not shed a tear for her murdered husband, brothers, and children. During Aegon's conquest, the Aaron and Targaryen fleets fought in a battle in the waters of Galtown, which resulted in the destruction of the Targaryen fleet and the death of its commanding officer, Daemon Valerian. Visenya Targaryen, on her dragon Hagar, burned the Aaron fleet in response. Since both fleets were destroyed, the battle was considered a tactical draw, but a strategic defeat for the Targaryens, as they were unable to take Galtown. For House Arryn, the trouble did not end there, since the Sistermen on the Three Sisters revolted after the destruction of the Arryn fleet. Later in Aegon's conquest, Visenya Targaryen was charged with subduing the Vale of Arryn for her brother, Aegon I Targaryen, Sharra Erin, Queen Regent of the Vale, who ruled in her son's name, the boy king Ronald Arryn amassed the Vale's army at the Bloody Gate. Visenya, however, simply bypassed the gate and flew on her dragon Hagar straight up to the courtyard of the Eyrie to obtain the surrender of House Arryn. The Eyrie, mountaintop castle of House Arryn, was not burned with dragonfire though. Visenya arrived at the Eyrie some time after Aegon had burned Harrenhal, so the implication was obvious. The inhabitants offered no battle. Instead, Ronald Arryn, the current king of the Vale and only a boy, was so excited to see the dragon that he rushed out into the courtyard to greet Visenya. Rather than pointlessly resist the power of the Targaryen dragons, his mother and queen regent Shara surrendered after Ronald stated he wanted a ride on the dragon, which Visenya granted him. The Eyrie, an ancient castle and seat of House Arryn, is situated in the Mountains of the Moon, astride the peak known as the Giant's Lance, several thousand feet above the valley below. It is inhabited by the Arryns during the long springs and summers, before the family removes to the gates of the moon, at the bottom of the mountain, to sit out the winters. The Eyrie is only a small castle itself, it can hold a garrison of only 500 men, but is almost impossible to reach. An invading army would have to overcome the bloody gate at the mouth of the Vale before taking the gates of the moon. Then, as it advanced up the mountain path to the Eyrie, it would come under sustained attack from the Eyrie and the freeway castles up the path, all of which can drop rocks, boulders and oil on an advancing foe at will. The High Hall is where the household takes meals. It is a long and austere hall, with walls made of blue veined white marble. At the end of it sits the throne of the Arryns, a seat carved of weirwood. It has narrow, arched windows, between which are torches mounted on high iron or silver sconces. The Moon Door is a narrow weirwood door that stands between two slender pillars in the high hall. A crescent moon is carved into the door, which opens inward, and is barred by heavy bronze. The door opens into the sky. Most executions at the Eyrie use this door, which opens onto a 600-foot drop to the stones of the valley below. The crescent chamber is the Eyrie's reception hall. 
Here, guests are given refreshments and warmed by the fire after taking the climb up the giant's lance. The Maiden Tower is the easternmost of the seven towers of the Eyrie. From a balcony on the tower, one can see the veil and the giant's lance. The Moon Tower contains the bedchambers of Lord Arryn. Sky Cells are the Eyrie's infamous dungeons. They are shelves on the side of the mountain's sheer cliffs, left open to the cold sky, with slightly sloping floors to unnerve the prisoners. Many prisoners, driven mad by the cold and howling wind, commit suicide rather than remain imprisoned. The barracks and stables are carved directly into the mountain. The granary is as large as those found in much larger castles, like Winterfell. The Eyrie also contains a sept. The waterfall, known as Alysa's Tears, can be heard from the Eyrie. The wards of House Arryn are as high as honor. The High Road, or Eastern Road, is a pass through the Mountains of the Moon to the Bloody Gate and on to the Eyrie in the Vale of Arryn. West of the Mountains of the Moon, the High Road meets the inn at the crossroads in the Riverlands, where it connects with the River Road running west and the King's Road running north and south. The road is wild and dangerous, climbing through rocky foothills and thick forests in the Mountains of the Moon, past high passes and deep chasms to the Vale of Arryn. Travelers on the road are often attacked by the mountain clans or shadow cats. It is often closed by snow. In parts, the high road is just a stony track. The mountains have snow-capped grey-green peaks. Rock slides are common, and its foothills are rocky, high and wild. Mountains are inhabited by mountain clans who reject the authority of the errants. Wild tribes have sometimes raided the riverlands from the mountains. Many less-known houses reside in the Vale as well, but there's a reason why they are known less than the others. Sometimes one must not be as high as honor, just higher than the others. Thank you for watching, and see you in Vesterlands.